Welcome to the daily briefing of round two of the Reykjavik Open. I am uh, International Master Björn Thorfinsson and uh, as most of you could probably notice, the gentleman on my right is not Grandmaster Simon Williams. He is still playing uh, and uh, trying to uh, notch out a win in a better ending. But the gentleman on my right is uh, Fide Master Ingvar Johannesson, Icelandic Fide Master, who has uh, was playing today against uh, Yuri Krivorochuk and uh, we should maybe hear Ingvar, how was your game against the third seat of the tournament? Yeah, I will try to uh, put your name as well, I think it's Krivorochuk. Oh, I don't know, but okay. Uh, uh, we played the winner of French, uh, he played 93. Which is your favourite? Uh, which is more or less my favourite, so I was happy that he played that. Uh, he's only been playing that for, uh, for about a year now. He used to play the Taurus version, so I was quite happy that he played that. Uh, I was fearing some uh, some other opening like knight f3 or d4. And I think I got a, a good position. Uh, I felt like I didn't know the variation too well. And you often feel that way against the stronger players. You feel you're good, but you're probably just struggling already. I don't know. I, I think I was doing quite well there. Uh, but I uh, didn't use my time very well. Uh, that's usually what happens versus these guys. And and then I chose a wrong move, I think, at, at a critical juncture and, and had to suffer. Okay. Uh, Ingor is not going to ask me how my game was since I uh, lost against Sverrir Örbjörsson, who's uh, uh, a bit lower rated than me, and so I should be basically at the bar, not here. <laughs> but uh, thanks to Simon, I, I have to try to uh, analyze some games today. But uh, there is one thing uh, with Ingvar's opponent. There are so many grandmasters in this tournament that uh, yesterday we skipped past him, Yuri Krivorochuko, <laughs> who uh, has once before played in the Reykjavik Open and uh, then finished one of the joint winners. So he is also yeah. uh, a player to watch for sure. Yeah, you did mention him uh, and, uh, last night. No, and there's an <laughs> another uh, grandmaster who should be na mentioned as well, and that's. Uh, Ivan Chaparino, yeah, who is uh, definitely one of the likely candidates. Topol of second, so a, a very, very strong grandmaster. But uh, uh, today, in the second round, the, the strongest players, they started to face tougher opposition, but still, at the moment, there are not many GM casualties. Yeah, it looks like not, not many upsets. Uh, the top boards are still playing, but I think uh, the low rated players are, are suffering, more or less. And that's uh, very likely then that they will win it, since yeah. uh, it's, no, uh, it's, no, it's not a nice thing to be suffering in an endgame against someone who outrates you by three or four hundred rating points. Yeah, I think Schiaparino's Ciparino, game and Navarra, they are both up in exchange for a pawn in an ending. So I think they will win. And Last time I checked, Corona was up a pawn and, and probably winning. Yeah. So uh, the main upset today yeah. is uh, uh, on board 11. Uh, yes so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yesterday uh, so, so we had a we uh, had a lot of lot of fun with Simon Williams pronouncing Icelandic names, but uh, now I'm struggling with uh, yeah, Ukrainian we're names. We're going to butcher Ukrainian <laughs> names instead of Simon butchering Icelandic names. So it's Svetlana Chernyenko, that's my best. Yeah, she managed to beat uh, Yuri Schulman non nonetheless, and that's uh, yeah. quite an impressive feat. We're going to check that game. Might have a look at that later. Out later, yeah. Uh, there are also pleasant Icelandic surprises. We are a bit focused of that. on that, you must uh, forgive us. but. Uh, Main story for uh, for me is that uh, two young Icelandic players, uh, Vignir Vatnar Stefansson and uh, Nancy Davisdottir. Nancy is uh, she ten, nine, ten. She's ten, just turned ten. Vignir just turned nine, and they both drew against uh, opponents that outrate them by 500 feet points. So that's. Uh, that's a really <laughs> yeah. Nancy great should result. have won, but you know, every yeah. time you have like a like a small girl like that, beating yeah. somebody you had all, all the crowd uh, gathered on that board, so it's always interesting. They raise, they raise a lot of interest, for yeah. sure. Um, we should mention, uh, you know, he drawing against... Uh, the Icelandic champion, Hjelens yeah. Stingrinsson. That's uh, 
that's, that's a, an upset, but Inner is strong, so not a huge upset. So uh, other than that, I, I, I don't think there are any uh, any uh, jaw dropping results. So no. we should maybe turn to our first game today. Yeah. Tonight, that is, and. Uh, that's a bit of a miniature and it has a, a nice story behind it. Uh, with white pieces, that's a 13 year old Icelandic player, Olaf Johannesson. Oliver Johannesson. Uh, well, he, yesterday he was 13, today it's his birthday, so he's 14 years old today. And uh, this is the game he played against an opponent, <coughs> outrating him uh, 400 points. So we should just uh, look at that briefly. Yeah. So Oliver is white and his opponent is a Norwegian, I think, uh, Halvor Haga. Yep. And Oliver opened with e4. And we had the uh, Alekine, which I never had. I never played with black, uh, but two oh. or three times faced it with white. It's Norwegian players, he's female. She's female. Yeah. Okay. okay, we didn't know that. Isn't she? Well, I'm. There are you're, so you're many. You're asking or claiming? <laughs> <laughs> there are so many players in this tournament that it's incredible. Yeah, Halvor, that sh sounds female. Uh, yeah. When you say it, yeah, okay. But we shouldn't uh, state anything. We would be insulting. No. <laughs> I think I think we saw the beginning of the game. I think it's it's a guy. So. Uh, okay. So we're probably insulting some Norwegians right now. Yeah, but we, okay. should <laughs> we should we should we should shut up, shut yeah. up, shut up. So okay, just. Uh, these look like sensible uh, opening moves. But now Oliver lashes out with, with G4. Aggressive. Aggressive, you like it. Yeah. You <laughs> yeah, used to I grab your G pawn in your youth and, and you still do, so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to claim I like that move. This should be six. Treat. No, 92. Uh, I'm always so in love with a bishop pair that I don't know what I think about this move, but you let's see. Everything is still okay. Queen c8 and rook g1. So we could say that White's opening play has been uh, provocative and, and the maybe success, I would think. Yeah, probably and maybe <coughs> somewhat strange looking to black. I don't know. But here he must have thought that uh, he overlooked uh, f6, yeah. thinking Win that he's winning the pawn on g4. Pawn. So Oliver retreated uh, to c4 and Halvor. Uh, complied a bit too drastically here with bishop takes g4, which. Yeah, I saw this position, but Yeah, I don't I think. You didn't see the final move. <laughs> you didn't see the final move. Do you, you want to guess the final move? Uh, I can read. He, he can read. <laughs> you can read, okay. Knight, knight d6. d6. So uh, the game, game is concluded in uh, 13 moves. I would uh, say that this is quite uh, a birthday gift to uh, young Oliver especially since the opponent is outrating him by 400 points. So that was a nice story. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, uh, but then we should uh, turn to the, the main story of today. That's uh, the biggest upset. I will call her Svetlana. I, I, I really am struggling with her last name, but she managed to, uh, she's actually the girlfriend of Stelios Halkias, our friend ah, from okay, Greece. Okay. Uh, or fiance is probably a better yeah. word. I'm pretty confident. She's a wife. That's even a better word. Chernichenko. <laughs> Thank you for that, Mr. President. Uh, and uh, should we just go to the critical position? Yeah. So the the story of the opening is that uh, Schulman uh, managed to get a, a good position out of the opening. Slowly outplayed Svetlana, and uh, at this point uh, he is uh, completely winning. And uh, uh, he played here uh, knight c3, and uh, it looks like, and uh, it doesn't even look like, it's uh, a fact that the black position is uh, crumbling down. But here, uh, it's very important in, in, in chess not to, never to give up, and, uh, and here uh, Svetlana grabbed the only practical chance, which is to uh, play rook c3, yeah, sacrificing the exchange, and... Uh, just going for it. Yeah, and c3 and f4, the only uh, the only practical chance to uh, going for a mate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I get uh, some kind of play, go for the king. But normally, uh, 
you would think that this uh, would never work against uh, a strong player as uh, Yuri Schulman is. So it's uh, normally it basically shouldn't happen. So uh, not surprising. <laughs> it's not surprising, says international master Saiva Bjarnason. But uh, I'm still surprised. So let's see what happened. Uh, he played b4. Uh, see, he went for the king. F5. The bishop has to retreat. Bishop h7. She brought some pieces to the attack, not much else to do. Bishop to d8. And, and uh, f6. And it seems to be fully under control here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, Yuri was uh, I don't very think he worried, was worried at this point. At this point yeah. Does anybody know how, how the time situation was? The audience don't, don't know, so we, uh, we are in the... We're in the dark. Yeah, we're uh, in the dark with queen that. Queen b5, offering the exchange. Of course, white can't exchange queens. Bishop to g6, just uh, protecting the f7 pawn. This looks... Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hard to imagine how black can go wrong here. h5, she took on g7. Yeah, that's a and tricky move. Okay, there's a, a bit yeah. of a life. In it, well, qu queen a4, that's probably... Yeah, that's probably a blunder. That looks dubious. That's probably the losing blunder here. Uh, <coughs> so what do you think uh, black should do here defending? Uh, it's actually a good question. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's tempting just to take the knight. But maybe that's not good enough. There are, uh, yeah, and bishop takes d8, and maybe there's so some... wants to come around to h4 yeah. and h8. Uh. Queen h4 coming at some point. So what's the situation? Can we take on e5? And this. Oh, bishop f6 maybe then. No, then queen h5. Bishop... Well, c3 is hanging then. Yeah. It's actually but still black is up some pawns, it shouldn't be a problem. It's actually very, uh, it's uh, getting a bit tricky now, but uh, if I know Shur, Shur, uh, Shulman well, then uh, Yuri Shulman, then uh, <laughs> he was probably in time trouble at, the, at this point. Yeah. So queen a4, rook takes d8. And now amazingly, uh, yeah, it seems, it seems to position. be turning around now. Yeah. Knight h6 check. He's caught in a, a mating net, and uh, white is winning at this point. It's possible he missed something here. Queen f6, king takes, uh, queen takes d8, rook c1, king h2. Maybe he just missed that. Uh, let's see what happened. Queen d1, maybe he simply missed that. There's a checkmate here, bishop g5, a nice move. That's a very nice finish by Svetlana. And uh, now black is... Yeah, Queen of Six in one, move. in one move. That's a nice pattern. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> really. And a good, good lesson now to give up, you know. Yeah. Even, even if your uh, opponent is a, a super grandmaster, you should never, never give up. That's, that's what this game teaches us. But uh, Yuri has an excuse. Recently, he, had, he, uh, had a, uh, he and his uh, wife had a child. So he hasn't been sleeping. He okay. to told me this in the Icelandic <laughs> league. Yeah, it's always nice to have an excuse. <laughs> it's very important to have a nice excuse. Yeah. So should we uh, look at uh, Sokolov's game? Yeah. I uh, thought uh, we looked at Ivan Sokolov, Sokolov's game uh, uh, yesterday as well. So it might look as we favor him very, very much. We do in we a do way, actually. but. Uh, <laughs> But uh, Ivan is uh, just uh, playing very enterprising games. Yeah, actually, most, most of the rounds. top ports didn't look that interesting. So no, the uh, most of the GMs uh, in the, at the top ports they're just taking it slow. They're having positional maneuvers and yeah. uh, playing slow and secure games. Just grinding it out, but uh, Sokolov <laughs> kind of just went for it this time. Yeah, like so like yesterday as well. D4, I think he always opens. D4, more or less, knight of six. So we have, uh, well, you could play, play the Nimso, but he played D5. <coughs> Going to the king's gambit. Uh, queen's gambit. Queen's Good. gambit. 
that was that. E3, uh, castles. And yeah, they've been playing this more or less uh, in the top tournaments, this Bishop F4 variation. B6, and well, not even went for a move that you would have went for uh, some 10 yeah. years ago. No, I would have gone for it now as well. You still go for it now? I really like it. G4. Yeah, this seems to be... Uh, it's funny how in all these, uh, all these openings somehow uh, there o there's always room for G4 at some point. Yeah, this seems to be a big trend. They had uh, a recent uh, nullity by, I think, Aronian in, in the Lusker variation where he played H4. Yeah. I just went for this uh, H4, G4 type attack. Uh, so let's see what happened. D takes C4 and... It's probably the strongest move. Yeah, and Queen F3. And so obviously attacking the rook, black needs to do something on the diagonal, and he interposes the knight on d5. Bishop takes c4. And Bjorn, you, I think you like the white position here. Uh, yes, but it's, uh, it's still it's, uh, it's hard to play. It's risky, but... Uh, there are, uh, it's difficult because there are no weaknesses on the, on the king side. It's uh, hard to find some point of entry at, yeah. at the moment. So, okay, c6, a normal move, knight g2, e2, bishop a6. It's very wise to try to uh, exchange pieces. Yeah, especially <laughs> the light squared bishop. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, behind the pawns before, so sort of like in the French, you want to exchange this bishop, so bishop a6. e1 took, knight takes, and... h4, of Yeah, course. of course, of course. <laughs> it's forced. The Thorfinn's on attack. Rook c8, uh, g5. C5 is a. That's a normal move. I think. But uh, it might. Uh, maybe rook d1. It's a possibility. Or take first on c5. And yeah, maybe you can just uh, possibly take on d5. And C5 and rook, uh, rook to D1, something like that. Do you want to take with the queen or? Yeah, maybe with the pawn. And it's possible. Yeah. Okay, but just rook D1. Well, it's not clear, you know. The white king is bad, but. He was probably af afraid of something like this. Yeah. But rook d1 is also probably a good move. So probably wanted to uh, prepare it better with rook, rook to c8. Yeah. g5. <coughs> and knight takes f4. Okay, this seems solid still for black. Uh, he plays knight to c7. Mm -hmm. And white can't take on c6 because knight d5 and takes on f4, I guess. Yeah. The queen has to go to a bad square, and now uh, white has a very bad structure. True. So instead, even he went for the attack with knight to h5. It's amazing how he managed to uh, still get through because uh, now the f f6 uh, square is obviously a, a threat. At, at some point, to try to enter the black So knight position. to g5. Uh, and even chooses to uh, keep pieces on here to, uh, to help us attack. Knight to e2. Yeah. And now, now the knight on d5 doesn't have many moves, so he's going to push him back with e4 in, in the next move. Mm -hmm. This is a GM move, knight yeah. e2. So c5 seems like a sensible move. Uh, and now e4, like I said, knight c7, rook d1, activating the rook, <coughs> and now he's threatening to take on c5, so <coughs> he either has to move the queen away to e8 or play like it did, queen to d6, <coughs> planning to take on c5 with the queen. And now came uh, an active move by Ivan. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, 
which was obviously always a plan to, yeah, uh, to go knight f6. Knight f6, check. Now it's fairly clear that he can't take with a pawn. Uh, we're threatening queen check and uh, queen g7 mate, so that's obviously going to be a disaster for black. And king h8. King h8. Uh, then maybe just uh, e f e5. Maybe and e5 and, and queen h5, something like that. Yeah. Black and doesn't. Yeah, it's going to be hard for black to transfer his, his pieces to uh, defend the king. Yeah. So bishop takes f6 might be forced. Uh, it's probably forced. G takes f6. And now. Uh, now finally, it looks looks like even is uh, has something. Yeah. Substantial. Black took on d4. Knight takes d4 and rook after d8. So he's pinning the knight. There's and only one sensible way in yeah. defending the rook, so castle. It's surprising to castle, you know, with this pawn structure maybe, but black doesn't have any pieces to attack the king, so <laughs> it, it should be quite safe. But now comes a blunder. Uh, yeah, I think the best move is something like uh, queen c5. Just get the queen yeah. out of this pin. And I think black. the position is just complicated. Yeah. Probably white is for choice, you know, he has the attack, but it's not clear how to continue. No, black seems to be able to uh, start know, uh, exchanging pieces. If you just go for a, for a K-man approach, try to checkmate him, uh, black always has uh, the queen to f8 at some point, so... Uh, yeah. Oops, sorry. Just going to put an arrow, forgot to do it. Yeah, we said queen f8 if you want, so... Uh, yeah, I'm not that sure. It doesn't work, so... I'm not sure uh, why has so much in this position. No. Not at all. But, okay, of course, even would have uh, ground him out, <laughs> like he told us yesterday. Uh, That's it. So instead, 98, which uh, looks like a blunder. And now simply uh, knight f5. The rook is sufficiently covered with, uh, with the queen as well, so if the queen retreats, I guess the simple move is just uh, 97. Yeah. Picking up the exchange and should be easy from there. So instead, he uh, opted to sacrifice his queen. This is like in the game before, the only practical ch chance maybe. Yeah, he's hoping for a, hoping to set up some kind of a. But it's a blockade. still. Uh, there's no, a little hope, I would say. Yeah, rookie six. So let's just go quickly through uh, the last moves. I think it should be more or less hopeless. I mean, he has a rook and a knight for the queen, but white has yeah. some, well, an extra pawn at the moment, <coughs> but probably he can win this pawn on g7. Rook to c2, h5. And if he captures on f2, what happens then? Uh, it, just, uh, it's maybe even if if, he, if rook takes uh, f2, maybe eight. Maybe no. eight six. Doesn't no, that, then uh, rook g6. Yeah. Well, let's look at that. For one second, uh, I believe that this might be a move, but then uh, this is a bit annoying. So uh, that won't work. So the <coughs> Sokolov so what would about probably queen g4? have gone for the simple queen g4 and. Uh, He's probably winning yeah, easily. Yeah, he's just threatening the mate. And yeah. now he can play h6. Yeah. Now it's just... Uh, he's threatening... Threatening uh, the queen takes e4. The knight on e4. Among other things. Yeah. This looks lost completely. So you want knight g5 instead. Queen g3. h6. At least creating some luft for his king. f4. Rook c5. And now he can't take on g5 because rook takes. So b4, rook f5, <coughs> queen to c3. And if rook takes f4, well, rook d8 and rook h8 decides the game. Mm -hmm. So he tried to hang on. King takes g7. 
Queen is C8. That? Yeah, sorry. There's a, isn't that a? No, I'm sorry, I'm mistaken. I thought there was a trick there. Queen C8 threatening. And this is evil things. Yeah, he's just threatening rook, rook to G8 and then rook uh, H8 with checkmate. So he made loot for his king, but have to had to give up his knight. And resigned after uh, yeah. king takes h3. Yeah, it was an interesting game, and, but I'm pretty sure that Larsen, who is from, from Denmark, was uh, completely fine before he played. Yeah, like yeah he, queen c5 he, is he probably a fighting game, but this g4 move, this approach is, is interesting. Yeah. And he did uh, exactly uh, right by just uh, keeping his king position uh, Solid, yeah, no weaknesses. Didn't create and, uh, any weaknesses with h6 or g6 to give white a hook yeah. for the attack. So, uh, those were the games today. Uh, we should maybe check if should uh, check we have some uh, new results. New results. If the big guns have managed to beat the. Yeah, well, Caruana won. That was Caruana, surprise, surprise, has managed to win. Uh, his game against uh, Sigfusson, Icelandic feeder master, but uh, yeah, but Navarro and uh, Shiparino are uh, still, still trying to grind it out. No news from that game. No, still, still, still playing. playing yeah. yeah, Navarro won. Navarro won. But uh, Ragnarsson, Dagur. Uh, <laughs> is it? Yeah. Is it still going on? Yeah, that's that's we maybe. Forgot to mention him. That's yeah. a story. So you can far, still see these games on the webcam. You can see the, his game. Okay. Is it on the webcam? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Green is right near the. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But that, you, you talk about him. Yeah. Uh, yesterday he was the surprise of the first round by beating uh, international master from Canada, and today he faced uh, an opponent with uh, from the United States. Feeder master rated what? Twenty three fifty five. Twenty three fifty five. Keaton uh, Kira. Or something. I'm not gonna yeah. stand by that pronunciation. And the last news we had was that Tiger was trying to win an end game two points up. Yeah, it was two points up in a, in a queen, queen end game. Yeah. It looked, looked to be winning, but there's always a yeah. the, uh, danger of allowing some perpetual checks. So that was. Uh, but it's a fantastic stage, yeah. Fantastic result by Tiger since his opponent is 500 rating points above him. And but uh, we should maybe blow the sequ tell the secret that uh, Tiger is uh, severely yeah, un underrated, underrated, but underrated, should be like... But still, he's the overperformer of the tournament so far, definitely. Yeah, so it's a great start for, the, for his tournament. Uh, other than that... Yeah, so round three tomorrow, we should start to see some, uh, some grandmasters meet each other on the first porch, I think. Yeah, I will be... Uh, sent down to the basement after my disaster today. Yeah, you, you'll have to recover, <laughs> you know. Slow, slowly recovering. But uh, other than that, then uh, I think we should just say it, say uh, goodbye tonight and we will see you guys tomorrow morning, yeah. tomorrow evening. Hopefully, hopefully Simon will uh, finish his game and then be back here in the booth. He will uh, replace either one of us tomorrow. So uh, actually there is news that Simon has won his game. So. We'll, the ginger GM is okay. probably quite happy at the bar right this minute. Yeah, we're we're going to join him. I thought it was uh, <laughs> dangerous. Yeah, we'll join him. Thank Goodbye. you. Thank Bye -bye. you.